Good evening. Thank you for joining us. It was a night of good laughs here in the border city as some world renowned comedians made a pit stop here. It was part of the investor group's comedy tour fundraiser, one that aims to bring doctors to our city. On a wild Friday night in Lloyd Minster, I made it. Alonzo Bowden was the main attraction at Friday night's event. The comedian brought the house down, taking friendly jabs at the border city and at gas prices in the States. It's a little more expensive here. If, it's, if it was cheaper, we would invade you and take it. Because I'm an American, and that's what we do. Bowden earned himself a household name back in 2004 when he appeared on the reality show Last Comic Standing. Last Comic Standing is Alonzo Bowden. But Bowden says the reality show wasn't his first big break. My biggest comedy moment was here in Canada when I did Just for Laughs in 1997. That was when I first became a comic, like full time. I gave up the day job. The former airplane mechanic has now embarked on a Canadian tour, providing laughs and helping raise money at the same time. This is the second year that I've did the fundraising event. And uh, last year we raised $13,000. We had a great start. Um, this year, I think we're going to be a little less. I think we're going to be somewhere around that $10,000 range. Money raised is going to the Lloydminster Region Health Foundation. It will be used for their physician recruitment fund. And the more physicians that we can have in Lloyd, the better the whole community is. Also on this tour, British comedian Matt Kirshen, who was also in Last Comic Standing, he says he's happy to be performing in Canada. You're that kind of middle ground. Like, you fit, you fit, there's a, you're a little bit American, you're a little bit European, you know, you've, you drink, so I'm, I'm good with that. I'm happy with that. You don't look at someone who has more than two beers like they need help. David Crow has been doing comedy for more than 20 years. He says the border city has a special meaning to him, and it all has to do with his father making fun of his mom's pie crust while he ate one at a truck stop. My mom was just slightly offended, but swallowed her ego at the time and uh, adopted that recipe, and it's been the pie recipe in our family for the last four 50 years, and that truck stop was apparently here in Lloyd Minster. This show was a big success and has been one step closer to bringing better health care to the city. Thank you guys for having Thank you for having me do this. The hope for more celebration was just a dream a year ago, and today it became reality. The Battle River Ranch Camp hosted one of their biggest events with music, comedians, and the support of their community. Hope for More is a nonprofit group of individuals whose mission is to bring hope to this generation. However, this celebration of compassion came from a place of tragedy. I vowed to God that I would forever speak up his name after my husband died tragically six years ago. So I just want to help people bring them the true hope that no one seems to know about anymore. But it brought strength to the event, which left a lasting impression upon those who attended. The music is great, and the people are very friendly, and there's all sorts of different things to do. People from different walks of life gathering together, and it's a very positive environment. When I saw the outline of speakers and musicians that were here, I thought, you can't miss something this local. With the success of this year's event, organizers are already planning on making it an annual event. Canada is one of the top 15 countries with Filipino workers, and here in Lloydminster, our community is growing. So the First Baptist Church is preaching out, or rather is reaching out to bring the message of God's love through an inspirational contemporary band. Praisia is a missionary singing group from the Philippines on a Canada-wide tour looking to help churches and Christian organizations back in the Philippines. The reason why we're going to international to other countries is because our ministry focus now is the diaspora ministry, which is the scattering of Filipinos all over the world. And we're here to find them, meet them, encourage them, and just tell them that wherever they are, God has uh, put them there to be an inspiration to other people. It, it has become uh, important for us to be ministering to different cultures and to, to show the rest of the community of Lloydminster that they are being heard and they are being served and ministered to whatever their color is. Huge game at Armstrong Field today. The CMFL championship up for grabs. It would be Toronto against Lloydminster.
The Toronto Titans got off to a 5-0 lead as the Vandals were looking very shaky to start things off, giving up a couple of fumbles and a safety. Titans regular QB, two-time Heck Crichton Trophy winner Tommy Dennison out for the game. Tiny Phil Dixon looks beat on this play, somehow scrambles for a big first down. Very next play, Titans running back Chris Newman jukes his way in for the score. It's a 12-0 game for the visitors. Before the quarter's out, Vandals go for it on third and one. Devon Harper doesn't get anywhere, but things turn around in the second. Big Velo Preeb connection sets up six for Tendai Jazi. Vandals would add the extra point and a rouge from the kickoff 12-8 game. Titans still trying some tricks, going for the fake field goal with two minutes left in the half. Dixon doesn't get anywhere and can't make the pass. Vandals get the ball back, and this time Devon Harper finds the open field to start a drive that would lead to another Jordan Preeb touchdown. The Vandals held on to the lead from there. They are your new national champions. They won at home 25-19. The Lloyd Minster Comprehensive High School Barons came into yesterday's football game against the Cold Lake Royals, riding a two-game win streak. Despite the Royals' losing record, the Barons would be in tough, with starting QB Duke Young out of the lineup with an injury. Barons down 6-0 thanks to a couple field goals by the Royals. On a big punt by Cold Lake, Kelton Bossert grabs it and gets some huge blocks, then tears down the sidelines to put the Barons in scoring range. Couple plays later, Bossert gets the handoff, but fumbles the ball recovered by Cold Lake. Very next play, Royals try to get the running game going, and they fumble. Barons recover and would settle for just one point, 6-1 game. Royals next possession, they do get a run. Clinton Peterson finds room on the right side to coast to the end zone, 13-1. Barron's ball, substitute QB, Brandon, Braden Tangent throws it right into the arms of Lane Sove. He gets a good run before being tackled by Jordan McCormick. But play was overturned and McCormick takes advantage on it, going for a big run to set up a TD for the Barons. They trail 13-11 at the half. Final two minutes, 22-18 Royals. McCormick moves the chains again with a big run and a sweet stiff arm. Then third and long. Tangent completes the quick slant. McCormick gets the first down and more. The Barons come from behind again to win 25-22. I would like to think that uh, we can start getting a lead early instead of playing comeback football. But one of the advantages of our program is uh, we got one guy that goes two ways and he doesn't go two ways every time. Every other team in this league is playing four, five, six, sometimes seven guys two ways. And uh, it's a philosophical thing for us and we want guys on the field and uh, this gives them a chance to be on the field. And, and I think that's part of it is it makes a difference. Uh, I thought we were going to be 4-0 by now, but no. Uh, I'm happy what we were at. It was a way better improvement than last year and even from our first game. And I'm happy with what we have. Good job. Meanwhile, the Holy Rosary Raiders were on the road yesterday to face the Wainwright Commandos. The teams met on opening week this year when the Raiders won at home 42-6. This time around, the score was changed, but the differential and result was the same. The Commandos stay winless after a 36-0 loss to the division-leading Raiders. The final motocross race of the season wrapped up in the Border City today. Over 100 riders in 14 different race categories competed in the inaugural Lucas Bachman Memorial Race. The event honors the promising rider who touched the lives of many in the motocross community. He absolutely loved the sport, so it's, I love the fact that we can just keep his name going and support everybody else in the community. Everybody has done a, an incredible job uh, supporting this event for today. I can't wait for the rest of the day to unfold to see how the racing goes. The course did receive a facelift this summer, and it's left an impression on the riders. More turns, more jumps. Yeah. I think anyone would like it. Even the widow, it's a big thing. No one has a big jump like that, so I don't know. Takes some courage to actually get up and do. The track flows a lot better for like the guys that are doing all the big jumps and stuff. It's my favorite track by far, and the new changes are great. 
The Bobcats knew this year was going to be tough with many of last year's top scorers leaving, but no one could have predicted the dreadful start to the year. Coming into last night's home game against the Calgary Canucks, the Bobcats were the only team without a point going 0-5. Four minutes into the first, Cats draw first blood. Dustin Lebrun pokes the rebound in. It's 1-0. On the power play, Lebrun looking for a second at the side of the net, but Ravi Datani stops it. Then it's Calgary on the power play. Damian Kolnich beats Kyle Baumgartner, tying the game up. Stangs back on the man advantage. Matt Hasseltine will go bar down, giving Calgary the 2-1 lead. Bobcats answer back. Travis Wellman pounces on the rebound. With 19 seconds to go in the first, it's 2-2 after one. In the second, Calgary with a great chance to retake the lead, but Chase McMurphy just fires it wide of the net. Then on a three-on-one, David Norris gives it to James King in the slot, but Baumgartner comes up with a stick save. In the third, another odd man rush for Calgary. They capitalize. Keegan Thompson goes top ched to make it a 3-2 game. Robin Carlson would tie it, but with six minutes left, Calgary wins 4-3. You can only turn over the puck so many times in one day. And I think that, uh, you know, we have to have guys on the ice who are responsible and make hard plays. And I, you know, I'll tell you, it, it uh, you know, if you look at uh, Anderson, the Anderson work line, played a solid game all game. I mean, there, there was mistakes there, but, uh, but I mean, they were consistently solid all game. They got rewarded for that. And that's what we need. That, that kind of effort is uh, what it's going to take for us. At this point in time, just, Points are not really in my in my good books right now. I don't know why. I just I just want the team to start winning and kind of jive together in some situations. Like it just seems like the bounces aren't going really our way. And I think we get up and we feel too I don't know feel too happy with ourselves once we're up. And then all of a sudden we kind of go downhill from there. And I just don't think we can do that anymore. I think it's time to really turn it around. The Bobcats are back in action again tonight at home against the Olds Grizzlies. The game has the making of a high-scoring affair as the Bobcats have allowed a league-leading 25 goals against, while the Grizzlies have given up 24. But Olds brings a, a hard game. I mean, they're very physical, they're tenacious on the puck, so I mean, we're just going to have to be very smart. Uh, we're going to have to stay out of the penalty box and we're going to have to capitalize on our chances, you know, no question. The Grizzlies also played last night against the Bonneville Pontiacs, who have not lost in regulation this year. Old scored three goals in the second period to lead heading into the third, before Spencer Fu scored on the power play to send the game into overtime. The game went to a shootout. Jackson Dudley was the only punt to score. Mitch Owsley and Dylan Hubbs scored to give Olds a 4-3 shootout win. The Pontiacs will look to regroup from that tough loss tonight at home against the Calgary Mustangs. The Stangs have allowed 24 goals against, but have also buried 22 and have the league's third leading scorer. The Pontiac's Tanner Dusick leads everyone with nine points in seven games. The Lloyd Minster Universal Heat opened their regular season today on the road against the Grand Prairie Storm. The Heat struggled in their exhibition tournament last weekend, losing four close games. Their opponents for this tilt, though, finished with a league-worst four wins in 33 games last year. That opponent is the Grand Prairie Storm. The Russers men's and women's soccer teams are playing two games each this weekend. The Green and Gold had a difficult start to the year playing at home against some of the best teams in the ACAC. Today they were on the road against the worst team in the province. The Lady Rustlers absolutely blew the Lethbridge Kodiaks out of the water. They scored eight goals to shut out the Kodiaks in a very one-sided match. The girls now have 14 goals, four and four games and are 2-2 two and two on the season. Meanwhile, the men were also taking on the winless Kodiaks. The Rustlers' Matt Marilinen leads the ACAC in scoring with four goals in three games. We'll have scores for you as soon as they come in. The Lakeland Rustlers women's basketball team was in Regina today to compete against one of the best teams in the country before the season begins. The Cougars were number one in the CIS last year, and they showed why today. Dismantling the Rustlers 103-35, Leading the way for the wrestlers were Amanda Carlton and Amy Warbick with 13 and 12 points. So earlier this hour, we ran a story on the comedy tour that rolled into our city last night. Now, I got to be there. It was hilarious. Um, here are some of the highlights from last night. Have you ever interviewed someone who took over the interview and actually interviewed you instead? 
No, and I love this. We did an interview with the news for the show, and she said, you know, this is the only place that the two provinces meet. And, you know, Alberta meets Saskatchewan. And she said that like that would make a difference to me. <laughs> you know, as if that would somehow make, oh, well, now I know right where I'm at. Sometimes you play in places and you have a little bit of a go at the town, and then they're like, how dare you? Why, this is the finest place there ever was. It rivals New York for entertainment. I like a place where you're like, yeah, it's a bit crap. <laughs> My mother actually was uh, born in England, and then when she was 12, moved to Saskatoon. Uh, oh, there you go, yeah. Favorite part of her life, she said, is when she was a 12-year-old little British girl telling everybody she was moving to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. <laughs> And they would all say, where's that? And she'd say, I don't know. <laughs>